Psychotherapy is sometimes described as a process of helping a person to help himself. This film is the second in a series of three films designed to show how this process works with three different therapists. First, you've seen Dr. Carl Rogers, founder of client-centered therapy, at work with Gloria, our real live patient. Now we invite you to observe Dr. Frederick Pearls, founder of Gestalt therapy with the same patient. He will first describe his system of therapy and then demonstrate his work. Following, he will comment briefly. Now, Dr. Frederick Pearls. I am to interview a patient, and I'd like to give you some thumbnail sketch of what Gestalt therapy stands for. Uh, Gestalt therapy is working on an equation. Awareness equal present time equal reality. In contrast to depth psychology, we try to get hold of the obvious, of the surface, of the situation in which we find ourselves, and to develop the emerging gestalt strictly on the I and thou, here and now basis. Any escape into the future or the past is examined as a likely resistance against the ongoing encounter. A modern man has alienated, given up so much of his potential that his ability to cope with his existence becomes badly impoverished. My aim is this. The patient should recover his lost potential. He should integrate the conflicting polarities understand the difference between game playing, especially the playing of verbal games, on the one hand, and of genuine, authentic, beha confident behavior on the other. The civil war of inner conflicts weakens the efficiency and comfort of the patient, but every bit of integration will strengthen it. Now, in the safe emergency of the therapeutic situation, I repeat, in the safe emergency of the therapeutic situation, the patient begins to take risks and to transform his energies from manipulating the environment for support into developing greater, greater self-support that is reliance on his own resources. This process is called maturation. Once the patient has learned to stand on his own feet, emotionally, intellectually, and economically, his need for therapy will collapse. He will wake up from the nightmare of his existence. The basic technique is this. Not to explain things to the patient, but to provide the patient with opportunities to understand and to discover himself. For this purpose, I manipulate and frustrate the patient in such a way that he's confronting himself. In this process, he identifies with his lost potential, for instance, through assimilating his projections by acting out, by acting out the alien parts of himself. Principally, I consider any interpretation to be a therapeutic mistake, as this would imply that the therapist understands the patient better than the patient himself. Takes away from the patient a chance of discovering himself by himself, and prevents him from finding out his own values and style. On the other hand, I disregard most of the content of what the patient says and concentrate most on the non-verbal level as this is the only which, only one which is less subject to self-deception than his verbal pseudo-self-expression. On the non-verbal level, the relevant gestalt will always emerge and can dealt with 
in the here and now. We are going to have an interview for half an hour. Right away, I'm scared. You say you're scared, but you're smiling. I don't understand how one can be scared and smile at the same time. And I'm also suspicious of you. I think you understand very well. I think you know that... <laughs> when I get scared, I laugh or I kid to cover up. <laughs> but do you have stage fright? Uh, I don't know. I'm Let's mostly stay. aware of you. I'm afraid that, uh, I'm afraid you're going to have such a direct attack that, uh, you're going to get me in the corner and I'm afraid of it. I want you to be more on my you side. You say I get you in your corner and you put your hand on your chest. Mm -hmm. Is this your corner? Well, it's like, yeah, it's like I'm afraid, you know. Where would you like to go? Can you describe the corner you like to go to? Yeah, uh, it's back in the corner where, where I'm completely protected. And then you would be safe of me, for me. Well, I know I wouldn't really. Well, but imagine it feels you safer. Wear this, yes. Well, imagine you were in this corner, and you're perfectly safe now. What would you do in that corner? I just sit. Just, uh, just sit. Yes. Now, how long would you sit? I don't know, but this is so funny as you're saying this. This reminds me of when I was a little girl. Every time I was afraid, I'd feel better sitting in a corner. Okay, you are panicky. Little, are you a little girl? Well, no, but it's the same feeling. Are you a little girl? This feeling reminds me of it. Are you no, a little girl? No, no, no. No, at last. How old are you? Thirty. Then you're not a little girl. No. Okay. So you're thirty year old girl who's afraid of a guy like me. Well, I don't even know if I'm... I, yeah, I do know I'll be afraid of you. you. I get real defensive with you. Now, what can I do to you? You can't do anything, but I can sure feel dumb, and I can feel stupid for not having the right answers. Now, what would it do for you to be, feel dumb and stupid? I hate it when I'm stupid. What would it do for you to be dumb and stupid? But it put it so like this. What would it do to me if you would play dumb and stupid? It makes you all the smarter and all the higher above me. Then I really have to look up to you because oh. you're so smart. Yeah. Oh yeah. But have me up right at left. No, I think you can do that all by yourself. Oh. I think the other way around. If you play dumb and stupid, you force me to be more explicit. That's been said to me before, but I don't buy it. I don't now, believe it. What are you doing with your feet now? Wiggling. <laughs> What's the joke now? Oh, I'm afraid you're going to notice everything I do. Gee. Do you don't, want me? I, I want you to help me become more relaxed, yes. I don't want to be so defensive with you. I don't like to feel so defensive. Oh. Uh, you're acting like you're treating me as if I'm stronger than I am, and I want you to protect me more and be nicer to me. Are you aware of your smile? You don't believe a word what <laughs> I do too, but I know you're going to pick on me for it. Yes, you are. You're bluff. You're phony. Do you believe? Are you meaning that seriously? Yeah. If you say you're afraid and you laugh and you giggle and you squirm, it's phony. You put in a performance for me. Oh, I I resent that very much. Can you express it? Yes, sir. I most certainly am not being phony. I, I will admit this. It's hard for me to show my embarrassment, and I hate to be embarrassed. But, boy, I resent you calling me a phony. Just because I smile when I'm embarrassed or I'm put in a corner doesn't mean I'm being a phony. Wonderful. Thank you. If you didn't smile for the last minute... Well, I'm mad at you. That's, I. Uh, that's right. You didn't have to cover up your anger with your smile. Now, you, in that moment, in that minute, you were not a phony. Well, at that minute, I was mad, though. I wasn't embarrassed. 
Love looks when you're mad, you're not a phony. I still resent that. I'm not Who's a phony when I'm nervous. Again. I, I want to get mad at you. I, you know what I'd like to do? I, 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 I want you on my level so I can pick on you just as much as you're picking on me. Okay, pick on me. I have to wait till you say something that I can pick on, but... What does this mean? Can you develop this movement? It's, uh, I can't find words. I want to... Develop this, as if you were dancing. I want to start all over again with you. Okay, let's not go over. I know a corner I'd like to put you on. I'd like to ask you a question, and, and because I have a feeling you don't like me right off the bat, and I want to know if you do. Can you not play Fritz Perls, not like in Gloria? What would he say? He'd say that she's a phony, for one. Say so you are a phony. You're a phony, and you're a flip little girl, and you're a show-off. What would Gloria answer to that? I, I, I know what I'd answer. I'd say I think you are, too. No, say, tell this to me. You tell me what a phony I am. Well, I'm... Say, Fritz, you're a phony. Well, phony's not quite the right word, but it's more like a... a show-off. A show-off. Like you know all the answers. Yeah. And I want you to be more human, and that doesn't seem very human to me. To know all the answers is not very really human. Yeah, to right away find out how I'm kicking my feet and why am I doing like this. Why are you doing like that? Oh, dear, I've got eyes. I can see you kicking your feet. I don't need a uh, scientific computer to see that you're kicking your feet. What's big about that? You don't need to be wise to see that you're kicking your feet. I know, but it seems like you're trying to find some reason for it. I don't. It's your imagination. Okay. I know what I'd like from you. Can I tell you what I'd like from you? Yeah. I'd like you to be aware that I'm kicking my feet and to be aware that I'm giggling when I'm really nervous and accept it instead of putting me on the defensive having to explain it. I don't want to have to explain why I'm doing these things. Did I ask you to explain it? You said, why am I or what am I doing? No, well, I what am I doing, you said. That's right, kicking your feet. I didn't ask you to explain it. Is your imagination? It's not this Fritz, it's the Fritz of your imagination. It's a big difference. Now do this again. Again. How do you feel now? I don't know. Being stupid. I'm I... not playing stupid. I you don't see, know I the don't right know. answer. This is being stupid. <clears throat> you did something with your hair there. Is there any chance something in my hair what you object to? No. No. Okay. No, but... I, uh, your your hair and your features go along with the, the feeling I had about you earlier. I, w I had a feeling I could be afraid of you. <coughs> and you're the type of person that seems like you demand so much respect and so you're... Please play Fritz. I demand so much respect. Play this Fritz you just saw. Well, you know how smart I am. I know more about psychology than you do, Gloria. So anything I say, of course, is right. Can you say the same as Gloria, something similar as Gloria? What's the same act as Gloria? I demand respect because... I don't know. You don't no, know. I don't. I identify it with my father, but not me. I don't feel I demand respect. You don't demand respect? No. Sure not. As a matter of fact, I'd like more. I'd like you to respect me more. Well, you see? So you demand respect. All right, yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, if I could demand respect from you, I would. But do it. Who's preventing you except yourself? 
Because I feel if I get myself out on the corner, you're going to let me just drown. You're not going to help me one bit. And I know that I can't quite come up to standards with you. What should I do when you're the corner? Encourage me to come out. Oh. You don't have enough courage to come out by yourself. You need somebody to pull little members in distress out of a corner. Yes. So anytime you want somebody to uh, pay attention to you, call into a corner and wait till the rescue comes. Yes, that's exactly what I'd like. And this is what I call phony. Pardon me? This is what I call phony. Why is it phony? I'm admitting to you what I am. How is that a phony? That is a phony because oh. it's a trick, it's a gimmick to crawl into a corner and wait there till somebody comes to your rescue. I'm admitting it. I know what I'm doing. I'm not being phony. I'm not pretending I'm so brave. I resent that. I feel like you're saying unless I come out openly and stand on my own, I'm not a phony. Baloney. I'm just, right. as, just as real sitting in that corner as I am out here all by myself. But you're not sitting in that corner. Well, not now. And besides that, it's like passing judgment when you call me phony. I just hate that anyway. Now we're getting somewhere. I call anybody phony who puts them in act. And if you like somebody and you want to meet this person, to go to this person, tell him, I would like to meet you, I would call not for you. But if you coyishly go into that corner, <coughs> waiting to be rescued, this I call for you. This I call for you. And for I you still know. think you're judgmental. You know what I have a feeling? You've never felt this way in your life. You feel so secure that you don't have to feel. Anybody that does something like this, you're going to pass judgment on. They're being a phony. Well, I resent it. Good. Now play Fritz passing judgment. You are. You're sitting up there in your Play big old Fritz. chair. I am Fritz. I pass judgment. Pass judgment on me now. I don't feel close to you at all, Dr. Pearls. I feel that stony. I feel like you're playing one big game. Right. Sure, we're playing games, but in spite of the games, I think I've touched you now and then. I think I hurt you when I called you a fool. Well, of course you did. And I think I hit a bullseye. That's why you feel hurt. I don't know. All I know is when somebody, when I feel the way I feel with you right now, now I, it's uh, like you don't have feeling. Fine. Now, exaggerate this. What you just did. Oh, <laughs> like That's it. Don't talk to me like that. I this. can't. I can't. I want to laugh. I want to... I'd like you to be younger than me so I could really scold you. How old must I be? Uh, My age, 30. Good. I'm 30 now. Imagine I'm 30. And now you're scolding. Okay. Don't be so cocksure of yourself. Don't think you're so doggone smart. Don't act so proud because you've never been in the corner. I think you can be just as big a phony parading around like you're so damn smart and you know all the answers as much as me sitting in my corner. Oh, and I like the feeling of you being younger. Yeah. I'd like to really, I'd like to embarrass you. Yeah. Embarrass me. Well, you, Tell me what you wouldn't get embarrassed. You seem unaffected. Tell me, embarrass me. Tell me how odd, how ugly I am. Well, you don't look old and ugly, you look distinguished. And that gives you, that's all the more on your side. If you look so distinguished, then see. That's more on your side, too. Well, Gloria, can we say one thing? We had quite a good fight. No, I know. Mm-mm. No. I felt... I don't think came, you're fighting with me. But I felt you came out quite a bit. Well, I'm mad at you. Wonderful. But you seem so detached. You don't even seem to care that I'm mad at you. <coughs> I feel you like, like you're not recognizing me at all, Dr. Pearls. Not a bit. This is quite true. Our contact is much too superficial to be involved in caring. I care for you as far as, let's see, you're right now my client. I care for you as far as I like to, like an artist, bring something out which is hidden in you. This is as far as I care. Well, I'd like you to 
I'd like to feel that there's some... It's frustrating. If I were to leave you right now and not see you again, it would frustrate me to feel like there hadn't been more contact. I feel completely out of contact with you. Like I'm talking to the baby that doesn't understand me or something like that. I don't feel like we're a bit in contact. And that, ooh, that frustrates me. That bothers me more than being angry with you. I'd rather we were angry and fought than to have no contact. Yeah, this reminds me of when my husband and I used to fight. He sits there and he listens to me, but he's not even aware of how much I hate him and how mad I am at him. I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather affect you. You'd really hate me or something. And, and I feel like you're purposely staying out of contact with me. How should I be? Give me your fantasy. How, sh how could I share you my concern with you? I can't say in words. I know the feeling I'd, I'd see on you, but I can't say. It's just a feeling like, I don't know. It's like I want you to respect me more as a human being, that I've got feelings. Now we come back to the beginning. So you want respect. Yes, I do. I, I do. See. This is a different kind of respect than I meant the Never first time. Mind, but, but you want, you need respect. Yes. I respect you so much as a human being that I refuse to accept the phony part of yourself and address myself to the genuine part. Right now, the last few minutes, you were wonderfully genuine. You were not playing anymore. I could see you were really hurting. Well, I don't feel I've got a right. When I don't like somebody or I disagree with somebody's doing, if if I should respect them, if they're above me, they're superior to me, I don't feel I've got a right to really, really tell you how mad that's, I am at that's, you. That's garbage. <coughs> You're not jacket jacketing. You're getting back to your safe corner. Well, <coughs> that's <coughs> the way it feels. <coughs> that's what the safe corner feels like to me. Right. Now go back to your safe corner. Because we have to part very soon. You stay in your safe corner. You came out for a moment. You nearly met me. You could get a little bit angry with me. Now go back to your safety. I feel like you're telling me the only way you respect me as a human being if I'm aggressive and forceful and strong. You, I feel like you couldn't even accept my... I'd be scared to death to cry in front of you. I feel like you'd laugh at me and call me a phony. I feel like you don't accept my weak side only when I'm yelling back at you or hollering at you. You must be crying in my presence. Well, I wouldn't even give you the satisfaction. Say this again. No. Say this again. I try not to. I try not to cry in front of you or show my weak spot for fear you'd jump on me again. Are you aware that your eyes are moist? I'm aware that I feel more choky. Yes, I feel that. Could you choke me? Pretend, but not for real. Why not for real? Well, because I don't hate you that much. No, you want to choke my tears, babe. You want me to choke you so that you wouldn't cry? I'd like to, if I'd like to choke you, it would be to make you cry. I'd like to see you weak. I'd like to see you hurt and, and vulnerable. What would do, this do for you? Make me feel like I'm, I have more of a right to be hurt and you wouldn't jump on me so quick. Would you jump on me if I would cry? No. Mm -mm. But I would jump on you if you would cry. You're sure of this? No, I'm not sure of it. What would, what would you like me to do if you were to cry? I was... Uh, you're smiling, you're smiling something off. Well, because I got two feelings. I was going to say I want you to, I want you to love me and hug me. But then I thought, no, I don't want to. What's your objection? I'd be scared to be too close to you. Now we're getting somewhere. First you want to be close to me. Now you're afraid to be too close to me. That's what I'm saying, but... That's right. <clears throat> now we got the two poles of your existence. But they're two different feelings. Close, I mean emotionally, but not physically. Yeah. But we've got the two poles of your existence now. Either far away in a corner, or be so close that you can melt into one with the other person. And apparently you travel between the two extremes. I 
I do. You know what I'm thinking? When I am really hurt and really uh, upset about something, and I want someone to love me, like my girlfriend will do it a lot, and she'll come up to hug me, I don't, I don't want it. Exactly. See? That's what I'm talking about. You cannot sustain contact. Okay, this is the what garbage. Are you? What are you afraid if you were too close to your girlfriend, if you let her hug you? Um, the only thing I'm aware of is, like, when I perspire, it embarrasses me that she'd feel how wet I am, and that she'd hold my body up close, and I don't know. Just are you aware of your facial expression, the kind of disgust yes. from me? Yes, yes, I am. I do this more, please. <laughs> it's icky. I know. <laughs> it's just icky. I can just feel what it is. I don't like it. Can you say this to me, Fritz? You're icky. No. no. What's the difficulty? Because I feel like if you really believe me, that would hurt your feelings. Oh, you must not hurt my feelings. Well... I thought I was so indifferent to this before that though nothing could touch me. No, no. Now you suddenly discovered a way to touch me. Isn't it? Well, you know what I believe? I believe you're the type of person, sort of like me, that you act like it wouldn't hurt your feelings, but it really would. You act strong, but you're, you're soft and vulnerable inside there, too. I think your feelings could be hurt, sure. But I don't think you'd show it very easy. What would I do? How would I conceal my feelings? By turning it back on me? <coughs> By oh. saying... Now, what did you get from that, Gloria? You turned the whole thing back on me instead of showing how hurt you were. Now, can you see this to Fritz? How did you, what did you get out of this, Fritz? Say this to me. What did you get out of what? What you just said, just to say this. Sure, I know what you'd get out of it. If I said, what did you get out of this, Fritz? You'd say, Nothing. It didn't bother me. It was you that did it. You still wouldn't let me know you were hurt. But I know what it would be if you told your true feelings, that you didn't want to show your hurt, so you covered it up. Same way with me in the corner. Now, if I were hurt, if I would cry, what would you do with me? You would be... you wouldn't be so superior to me. You'd be more vulnerable, and I could pacify you and make you feel better. You could hug me. Yes. And I could be the baby. Yes. Yes. I'd like that. You'd feel more on my level. I wouldn't have to feel so dumb with you. And the, the other way around, you would have to be my baby. She would cry. You would like to play the baby and be comforted and hugged and uh, poor thing. Well, I'd poor like me. that too. Well, I'll tell you something, Gloria. I think we came to a nice closure. I think we came to a little bit of understanding. I think we finish this situation now, right? All right. Uh, the demonstration was, in my opinion, uh, quite successful and consistent with my theoretical outlook. The avoidance of the genuine encounter manifested itself in three ways. The patient was first taking control by putting on a smiling, sophisticated, phony mask of oscillating between a pretense of being frightened and yet at the same time having me figured out, thus being or believing to be fully in control of the situation. Secondly, she was withdrawing by fantasizing of hiding in a corner. Thirdly, she was blocking the real encounter of melting through crying, which then would have been the real emotional meaning of this meeting. The patient was capable of identifying herself with several fantasies she had projected onto me. She was, this was especially evident with regard to her initial denial for a need to be respected. The need for environmental support started to come out besides her need to get respected. 
It was verbalized in a wish to be cared for, rescued from the corner, and so on. I broke off the session when the first tears began to appear. She began to play the role of the lonely child and apparently wanted to be hugged and comforted. But here too the assimilation of her projection began to work and she began to experience holding me like a baby. Apart from assisting her and assimilating her in some projections, the main therapeutic factor was to show her the inconsistency of her verbal and non-verbal behavior. For instance, saying that she was frightened and smiling at the same time. A frightened person does not smile. Where I feared was in the direction of her embarrassment. Uh, this embarrassment was protected by her brazenness and anger. To get to her existence, existential embarrassment, we would have to work through and eliminate the phoniness. That is the ease with which we can superficially assume any role that is required for a specific situation. This pseudo-adaptation is her way of coping with life. This is about what I got out of this session. Woo! <laughs>